Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Schachter. I'm the founder and CEO of Axiom Real-Time Metrics. Thanks for spending a little time with us, regardless of where you are in the world and what time it is in your day. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about rare disease studies and managing the data, the technology, and ensuring that you can really be in a great position uh, to make these studies happen well, especially in the virtual world uh, we're living in today. Next. I want to make some brief introductions. Uh, as I said, my name is Andrew Schachter. I'm the founder and CEO, and I'm very happy to be doing this presentation today with my colleague, Caitlin. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Townsley. I'm the Associate Director of Product Innovation here at Axiom, and I'm excited to start talking about um, different ways we can help support and think about rare disease studies. Thanks, Caitlin. For a little bit of background on Axiom, we've been running studies for literally as of uh, January, uh, 20 years, and uh, we've been running hundreds of studies, so we have tremendous experience, including in rare disease, and we'll talk to you a little bit more about some of the things we've learned about running these types of studies. Next. One of the basis to one of the things that we're going to get into today is the idea of how do you manage the information in a clinical study? Um, years ago, of course, it started off as EDC, and we all know that clinical research over many years has become a heck of a lot more complex. So we started building Fusion uh, in 2001, and we did our first randomized trial in 2003. And Fusion is an e-clinical platform, so it brings together all the elements of the data across all the, th the categories that you might be thinking about, EDC, labs, patient-reported outcomes, randomization, and so forth. We'll come back to details about Fusion uh, at the end of our presentation. Next. So the critical factors that we're going to touch on today are three study data-related challenges. One, the oversight of compliance. Two, how do you get and maintain patient involvement and know that that involvement is taking place and going well? And three, cost efficiencies. Caitlin? Thanks, Andrew. Um, so just diving into the first one here, looking at the oversight of study compliance. So um, for most of the rare disease projects that we work on, we um, know that because they are rare disease patients, these are often smaller studies. So we want to make sure that every patient that we get, they're going to be able to be usable in our analysis. So we want to make sure we're getting the most out of the patients that we have. And part of that is make sure, making sure that we're not deviating from the protocol or we have awareness um, to what those protocol deviations might be to make sure that we don't need to um, spend that effort finding more patients that are harder to find than most studies. Um, so just looking at oversight and compliance, we're going to talk about uh, having that oversight to those metrics, dashboards, and reporting. So when we think about how to uh, provide that oversight for a study, we want to focus on real-time reporting and dashboards. So having that oversight and compliance is really important for you um, as a sponsor, as a zero, even as the site, um, to see those early metrics on those patients. Uh, on the sponsor side, obviously looking at the key risk indicators for your study, um, just because for your study analysis, since it is a smaller sample size, we want to make sure that every subject is counting. So bringing that awareness isn't just important to our sponsor and highest executive levels, but we want to make sure that also there's oversight for our CROs and sites that they can help support um, every patient that we have in the trial to make sure collectively we're all ensuring protocol compliance. So when we talk about real-time access to reporting, what does that mean? So having reports that you're able to go in and generate yourself, that's gonna meet the needs of each of our required stakeholders. So letting a site know when subjects should be coming for visits to make sure that all of our visits are scheduled within window, um, having oversight on the monitor and data manager side for when data review is due or for any data that's not quite trending correctly. But on the sponsor side, having access to reporting tools, that's going to give you that overall picture of the study to provide that study control. And you should be able to go in and access all of that data really, really easily through reports. You shouldn't need to wait to have um, those reports provided to you on a regular basis or sent to you. Being able to go in and look and dive into the details yourself 
um, while at the same time using a system that has obviously notifications um, and dashboards. Um, so when we think about kind of dashboards, we want to be able to log in and know as much information as we can about our project that's important to us. So these are just some samples, but looking at how many subjects we've enrolled, how many adverse events, looking at those different rates, the number of subjects that have been treated, um, where enrollment is taking place, looking at reasons for screen fail. So maybe we need to change the eligibility just a little bit in order to bring those patients in. But having that, uh, those dashboards that are available to you to look at overall, what are kind of those high level metrics of the study? Are we tracking along with what our plans were? Um, we can also use dashboards to look at all sorts of levels of information. So looking at IP compliance. Um, so obviously IP compliance is gonna tie directly into um, maybe the PK parts of your study that we wanna make sure are gonna be successful and um, an analyzed. We're not gonna lose any patients because they didn't take their medication. So being able to track and um, oversee um, that patients are being compliant and that they don't have a compliance below or above a certain percent or if there's any sites that have a lower compliance, maybe that means we need retraining on the site side if we're looking at a, a medication that the patients are taking on their own. Um, so just looking at those different levels that we can really think about and, and manage and provide oversight to. And then of course, uh, making sure that uh, we're tracking all of the deviations in the study, that we're able to assess those in real time. Um, so in this case, we can track how many sites have more than a certain number of devi deviations or sites with more than a certain number of major deviations. We could look at on a per patient basis, looking at how many patients have deviations and then what types of deviations are those? Are those minor ones or major ones, important, non-important? And having that overall picture is really going to help you be proactive about what you need to do for your study. So whether there's a few patients with major deviations that's gonna impact your analysis and maybe you need to find some new patients to add to the study. Um, it's gonna give you that awareness and oversight in real time um, for you to look at and see before diving into further details. Hey, Kaylin, a couple of little comments to that. Sure. Um, I was just gonna throw out that um, you mentioned earlier about different stakeholders um, and um, the way we think about dashboards, obviously, is that you know everybody has different needs. Uh, people are managing drug supply, people that are managing safety, people that are managing, to your point, compliance from a patient standpoint. Um, it's important that these types of dashboards that are on screen are things that they're actually able to get to immediately to the specific needs of the different individuals. Um, and I also think it's just worth um, just bringing up the fact that you know, it's very often very helpful if you, you know, if you can pick up your smartphone and be looking at, you know, dashboards specific to your needs. So you're in a position to really understand, hey, this is what's going on. I'm away from my computer, uh, but I still have awareness about what's happening in the study at any given time. Great point, Andrew. Um, so looking just kind of shifting gears just a little bit actually into um, patient involvement and retention. So obviously when we're working in these rare disease populations, there's fewer patients obviously to draw from. So we wanna make sure that the patients are engaged in our studies. We wanna make sure that we're limiting um, losing subjects uh, to, for follow-up visits, having subjects withdraw. Um, so making sure that every patient is still counting. Um, so just some ideas and considerations around this. Um, we recommend where it makes sense, of course, to do an EPRO diary um, and EPRO questionnaires. Um, so just on the questionnaires aspect, um, getting better subject active engagement, getting those quality of life outcomes. It's important the patients can kind of see how they're doing. They can kind of track um, if they're doing better um, because of the treatments that uh, you're providing to them. Um, and it's also helpful to share with patient advocacy groups for future subject participation. If maybe in this study you can show that patients um, improve their quality of life, then it might be a good way to help patient advocacy groups support adding patients to your next trial um, if it's really gonna improve that patient population experience. Um, when we talk about the e-diary, we're also talking about improving subject compliance. So by having um, some sort of, sort of tool or method, so in this case, uh, an e-diary, 
um, having the subject reminders about upcoming study visits, about upcoming actions that are required by them. Maybe they need to take their temperature every day, or maybe they need to record their doses that they're taking. Um, those little reminders that can be sent to them on a smartphone or their email um, really help keeping that patient, oh yeah, I am part of this study, and making sure that everything's being done uh, in compliance with the protocol. So when we think about maybe a sample e-diary for tracking their IP, um, getting subject to confirm that they've taken their dose, uh, prompting a subject to remember to take their dose if they haven't recorded it yet, um, and it's going to help with that overall compliance. Um, so Fusion actually has an ePro uh, mobile tool that would allow patients to download an app to their smartphone or provide them a smartphone that they can download it to um, where they would be able to track all of that different information. Um, with that, they would get those notifications. So on screen, we just have a sample, a reminder to take their dose, and we also have a reminder reminder to change what their dosing regimen is. So maybe if there's any sort of titration requirements or at certain days they take maybe two pills in the morning at one at night and that's going to change for them. Um, being able to remind those patients to make sure that they're taking everything correctly on the day or the time or near the date and time that they're actually going to take it is super helpful um, to make sure that that's all being recorded correctly. Um, again, letting those subjects record the dosing information, any events, if they have to take their temperature, making it really, really easy for them because, of course, we want to keep these patients engaged. We don't want to overburden them. Um, so keeping them really involved um, in a simplified way um, where it's actually helping them participate in the study and not being a hindrance is a really important balance um, and can be really, really helpful for these different kinds of trials. Andrew, I'll pass it over to you. Sounds great. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, I agree with you. You know the points you made earlier. I mean, the 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 patients the patients really end up engaging if you give them tools that are easy to use. Um, you don't make their life a tech nightmare, um, and you make it easy for them to remember when to take their dose for something. It just it just makes their participation that much easier in a study. You know. Definitely. Um, so it's great that we are, are talking about the critical data and awareness of information, uh, but there's also um, buried in a study, uh, there are just tremendous cost issues um, that come into play. Um, a lot of rare disease studies uh, are involving um, smaller teams, and at the end of the day, um, the overall goal is how do you make your best use of your resources and spend funds that you have available to you appropriately. The way we think about that is you should really think about using more technology um, and eliminate manual processes that don't make sense. So as Caitlin's presented already, doing a lot of these things in a unified platform really puts you in a position where you have awareness about what's happening with the study, single sign-on to sort of all of the critical information for all parties, um, and eliminating this is over here and this is over here and this is over here and this is over here, which is very often how studies used to be run. Uh, but from an axiom perspective, we really think about how do you bring things together and eliminate manual tasks that don't bring value. Next. Um, to that end, when you think about the, the average study, it kind of looks like this visual um, to a lot of people that we talk to before they get involved in a unified platform. And it, you know you you might think about how the costs are. And let's just take for example you know these five buckets on the left. Let, let's assume that the the prices are technically equivalent. You're spending in a study five hundred thousand on the left and five hundred thousand on the right. The reality is that there's a whole amount of integration um, that needs to be done to get each of your separate systems to talk to each other. So you're spending people time and technology time. Um, just to be able to achieve the same result you could in a combined environment where all this technology is already integrated. So something to be aware of, number one. Number two, next slide, is um, as part of that um, process, you're spending an enormous amount of personal effort pulling and combining data together. Next. So for us, 
when you think about doing these types of things, regardless of the, the vendors in the marketplace, our, our view is to take the idea of a unified approach to running a rare disease study. Pull together all the essential information that you need, be in a position where all the data is in a connected hub for everything that you need to bring to the table so that you're not spending time that doesn't add value collating information together week after week after week. Next. So this is what Fusion looks like as a unified platform. Uh, the idea of it is that you can pick and choose uh, the modules that are across the overall platform. The major categories here are data basics, analytics, uh, EPRO as, uh, slash ECOA, including eConsent, uh, pulling together the safety requirements, so ensuring I have that adverse event and serious adverse event, so now I'm not reconciling them. IWS, randomization, cohort management, inventory management, all tied together, and then data import and adjudication. So labs, adjudication, imaging, and so forth. And then last but not least, uh, CCMS tools. Next. And the nice thing is about Fusion is you can configure it any way you want. So you might be doing a small phase one where you have a limited budget and you only want to use a small set of modules, or you might be doing a complex SAD mad, and it's really helpful to have all the technology talking to each other. Next. In addition to the technology, Axiom also can help from a services standpoint. So we help our clients on data analytics and data management, which is from our perspective, the heart and soul of doing a study. Clinical management, the aspect of, of getting the, the operational side of the study running pharmacovigilance and managing um, everything to do with safety, reporting, and so forth. And of course, the analysis of that data in terms of biostats. Next. And you can probably tell, how do we think about doing this differently? We've uh, indicated to you this central theme of being able to see all of the critical information. It's fundamental to how we think about running studies. Um, too often, you're forced to make business decisions without a really good view as to what's happening in those areas. We really believe single sign-on and reports across all data types puts you in a much, much better position. Next. So to bring it all together, it's what Axiom calls data-driven studies. Um, in the, you get on a call and talk about the issues, and all of the data that you need to discuss is already at your fingertips. Instead of asking that question, what is the status of this? That status is well known. It's known across every aspect of the study, and it puts you in a tremendous position to manage the risks and issues that come up in running clinical research. Pulling them all, all the data together for us means the reporting structure is at the top. I can see all of the essential information. Immediately below it then is that critical data from all of the systems rolled up together. Next. And last but not least, um, why do organizations work with us? Uh, number one, we, we deliver incredible technology, but I will suggest to you more than anything else, we have a relentless commitment to two things. One, putting together a tremendous strategy as to how you run this study that you bring to the table. And two, the success work that's needed to make a study happen, it is committed work every single day from a really smart group of people. Thank you. Greatly appreciate you guys spending some time with us. Kaylin, thank you for a fantastic presentation. Thank you. And we'd be thrilled to answer any questions that you have. Feel free to contact us at solutions at axiom.cc, visit our website, or of course, just click through on our screen to be able to request a demo. We're happy to sit down with you and talk about your needs. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, everyone.